Okay, guys, I got the onions planted, and um, I'm going to go back in there a little bit later because I guess I'm going to space out a little bit um, wider than four inches, and I believe I can sneak some more onions in there. But I'm going to quit for the day. The sun's going down, and I've been out here uh, dealing, uh, not dealing, but learning how to do the hoss tool high, high um, bed or high arch uh, wheel ho if I can get that out. But uh, guys, I'm not feeling very well, and I've been going all day long, and it goes back to my statement, how bad do you want it? But it is the sun goes down, you know, and we always start feeling worse when the sun goes down, especially with children. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to um, maybe pick this up tomorrow. We've got some rain coming in, a good bit of amount of rain, so hopefully I'll just get the rest of these onions in. But I'm really excited to go ahead and, and push to go ahead and, and get these onions in here. And uh, I forgot to tell you, you know, hey, this is Cammy. I never alone homestead, but y'all know who I am. So, guys, I, I, today, guys, I, I want to um, give you some hints on how to plant um, leeks and onions and uh, how to grow them big, nice, big, and sweet. So today, guys, I want to show you four steps to growing onions and leeks big. If you want big, sweet onions, there are certain things that we have to do. And with your plants, if you receive them into the mail, one of the things you've got to do is, and you can't plant them immediately, is, you know, even, uh, is take them out of the box, even if they're, um, take them out of the box, and uh, even if the roots, when you look at them, the roots are looking all dried out, and the tips begin to dry out. Know that the onions can live off of the bulb for approximately about three or four weeks. So rest in that. So you take them out of the box and you're going to cut that rubber band that's around them and put them in a container and store them in a cool, dry area until you can plant them. They say do not put them in, into um, to water. I put them in water for just a short period of time and to give them a little bit of moisture and then put and take them out, pour the water, pour the water out and then set them into a cool place. But they say do not put them into water, and that's actually, um, it's because they the bulbs are rot. Actually, when I did that, so they came in the mail, um, they actually started looking better. Um, it's cool here, and I, I, and I kept them overnight outside into the cool weather outside, and noticed the next morning with a little bit of sun, they look better. But I would encourage you to make sure to watch them so they won't rot. Another way that they, they used to do it is take a, a paper bag and dampen it and and wrap it around the roots for a little bit, um, especially uh, certain plants because of the heat. Um, but anyways, just watch that. You don't want to. You don't want to rot your bulbs. So, so what we got to you remember, you got three or four weeks. So anyway, so what you what we got to do is first is 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 prepare the soil for the onions and the leeks, and you know that they require full sun. Um, and good and good soil drainage. You know, you, you can't you can't have a whole lot of sloppy soil there and grow onions. Um, pretty much, you can't grow a whole lot of anything with sloppy soil. But the soil type, uh, you know, you got to know the soil type. That will be helpful. You got to know if it's acid, acid or alkaline onions. I mean, alkaline soil and onions. They actually prefer a uh, soil with a pH between 6.2 and 6.8. Your aquaculture extension service can test your soil for you, and you can buy actually a, a kit at your local garden supply store. And if the soil is too acidy, just mix a little bit of limestone. And if it's the other way around, you know, just um, uh, if it's too alkaline, just put some peat moss in there. Um, step two is to plant your onions four to six weeks before the last estimated spring freeze, which your aquaculture uh, extension service office can tell you when that will be. And no, remember the onions need fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizer right from the start. Um, using fertilizer, uh, and also if you want, they need water. Uh, they, they need water. So how to tell if your soil is, uh, just stick your index finger about up to, I mean, take your finger, not your index finger, take your finger, stick it up to you, the middle of your end, play your, using your index finger, and to your knuckle, and if it's moist, you know, that's how you do it, if it's dry, you're going to have to give it, be sure to give it some water, but they need, they require water, because you know, when you cut them, there, there's, there's lots of juice there, there's lots of water, 
So, um, they like the fertilizer. Uh, one of the good fertilizers to use is 10 20 10. Um, if, uh, if you have 10 10 10, that'll work, or 20 20 20. But um, usually, I use what's around my house. I've used both of those, they did pretty good, but they say 10 20 10. Um, so, I've done the other ones, and it's done just fine. Uh, actually, down there is 10 10 10. And I think I got some other type in my car, but um, anyways, the sun's going down. So what you're going to do, you're going to see on the side where I dug a trench, and I got my fertilizer down there. And, uh, you know, you're going to have that four inches, um, that trench about four inches wide. And you're just going to take a, a cup, like a Dixie cup, a red plastic cup that you get at Walmart, a cup of fertilizer per 20 feet. Now, this row is about 20 feet. And it took actually one um, one cup, and uh, so you're gonna you know fertilize it with, um, and then you're gonna take and cover it with two inches soil, which I haven't done yet. Um, the onions you're gonna plant the onions about six inches apart. Uh, some of these are a little bit wider. I can sneak some uh, on onions in there if um, you're gonna plant the onions six inches from the from the edge of the trench. Also, um, uh, actually, you're going to plant the onions like four inches apart, but you could that trench is going to be like six from the fertilizer to the plant, that trench, the fertilizer, with the fertilizer, uh, the trench where the fertilizer is in, and to the plant is six inches. So you want to keep, you know, be sure you give enough space. Um, do not plant the onions um, in the trench. Don't plant them near that fertilizer. You'll burn them up, um, you, and you're going to leave a, like a two-inch two inch margin between the onions and the outside edge of the bed. Um, so what you do when you, you take your little hole, you take your hand and you just plant these onions about one inch deep. If you want the onions to grow to maturity space, you know, you're going to plant them four inches apart. So these are more than four inches. Um, so I can go through these and go ahead and I got more onions and I can go ahead and put them in between there. If you want, if you prefer to, you know, harvest some early, as green onions, base them about two inches apart, and um, and then that way you can just pull some up, pull every other one up during the growing season when the bulbs are growing, and leave the rest to grow to maturity. Um, when you're planting um, several rows of onions, which I didn't get to today, but leave 16 inches between the outside edge of one row and the outside edge of the other. Um, the spacing of the center, you know, you got to put your trench, you got to put your fertilizer, and pretty much the neck of the rows from one row to the other is going to be about 36 inches. Um, step three is water thoroughly after planting and regular uh, thereafter to determine when to water. And you can hear my chicken. I don't know, that they've just been going crazy here late, lately. Um, so, you know, you can reach down to the soil and, you know, see if it's moist. Stick your finger in the ground up to your, you know, first knuckle. And then the onions are wet. Uh, you know, if it's moist, then the onions are wet or not. But if you have um, a drip tape or a furrow irrigation rather than a, a you know, overhead sprinkle, that's the best. Um, it won't, because it won't promote uh, diseases. But I know all of us can't have the, the drip tape and, you know, different things. So I have never had a problem with sprinkling overhead. Um, I just watch my soil, make sure it doesn't get dried out. Um, overwatering, but you've got to know that overwatering can be problematic. Um, it causes a lot of problems, causes disease. And, it, you know, if the leaves develop a yellow coloring, uh, then start cutting back the water. You know, if they're, they're, the bulbs are not big enough and they're just, the leaves are turning um, yellow, just cut back the water. The, you know, the closer to harvest time, the greater the need with the water so you got to remember that too and when the onions um top uh, starts to fall over stop watering then when they that, that part of that green foliage falls over stop watering and leave um just let the soil start drying out before um you start harvesting um during the growing season fertilize with amolia sulfate is another good fertilizer it's 2100 and you're going to do that every three to four weeks after planting and sprinkle it um, on your little strip where you got your fertilizer before and uh, at the rate of one cup per 20 feet a row. 
And the, uh, after that, the onions, you know, they start, they will suck up that nitrogen, they will suck up that water, you know, but um, when the onions start to bulb, you know, you know, you're going to, every application, you're going to fertilize, but then when the onions get the bulb, that foliage starts, you know, when the bulb starts growing, it's time for harvest, you're just going to cut back in every, on everything. Um, so also, you know, the weeds, you know, like I said, I had some weeds in here. I'm going to have to work with it because last, before, it's, I mean, summer was over. I didn't have weeds, but, you know, life happens. And, uh, so, but to get, you know, what I plan on doing is taking some straw, pine straw, and put it around this, this bed right here. I mean, not this bed, but this row right here and help with those, control those weeds. I'd also control the moisture. It helped with the moisture. And, uh, then when the, uh, the bulbs start growing, you're going to push that straw um, back away from the plants so that they can uh, start curing properly. You know, you don't want all the moisture then. That when it gets near harvest time, you start doing something uh, differently. Another way to tell if when it's time, uh, just getting near that harvest time, you know, the, the bulb will push through it a crack at crack as the onion um, pushes through the soil. And... Uh, so it's kind of like the birthing process. It has begun when you see seeing that ground around the onion bulb uh, crack. That's when you're going to stop fertilizing at that point. Now step four is harvesting. Oh yeah, we love the harvest time, and that's when the the top of the onions turn brown or yellow, and they fall over, and it's time to har harvest. And so what you're going to do, you're going to pull the onions up um, early in the morning, on a sunny day, and dry the onions. In the sun for two or three days and another helpful hint is to lay the tops of the onions over the uh you're gonna have the, uh, your onions laid on the side of your row you're gonna lay the tops of the onions one row over um one like the leaves over the uh, another bulb uh, over another bulb you're just gonna take the onion you're gonna take the next one you pull up and you're just gonna take those leaves that's on that that foliage and lay it over the bulb that you just put down before that. Now, um, so when they they're out there, you know, once you pull them up, they're curing. So how long your onions will keep? You know, we all want our onions to last a long time, but that, that depends on how you cure them. How you cure them after harvest? They must be dried thoroughly to avoid problems with rot and onions intended for long-term storage. And, uh, you know, so your onions, bulbs have got to be dried and you well into the field. You can also put them on the sheds, uh, in a storage, you know, um, after uh, at least two or three days of field drying. With the, you know, with the tops of the onions over the bulb of another. And, you know, you're just going to lay those onions. In other words, you're going to take those onion tops and just lay it over another bulb. It's going to help protect it. From the sun, you don't want them out there getting um, sun tans, or what should I say, sunburn. On um, the onions, uh, then can be, you know, when you get them cured, there is is time to transfer them to storage. You can put them in a room somewhere for the final drying and curing. And remember, if it rains, um, if you got to take those onions in, it's, you know, you got to if you take them in, it's going to take you longer for those onions to cure to dry out indoors. But what you want to do is by spreading them out in a well-ventilated area, you know, you don't want piled on top of one another. You want to give them some room to breathe and uh, dry them indoors. You got to remember, may take longer than outdoors. When the drying's complete, then what we're going to do, the onion neck is, you know, it's, it, you, you can look at the onion neck and it'll be tight. The outer scales on the onion are dry. And it, those those little uh, scales on that onion bulb will make a rustling noise when you touch them. And also, the skin color is uniform once the onions are thoroughly dried. And then you know what you're going to do? You're going to cut that. You're going to cut those roots, and you're going to cut that 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 top uh, back to about one inch from the bulb. And now they're ready to store and store your onions. And remember to store your onions in a cool, well ventilated location such as a garage or cellar or you can also put them into a mesh bag or a netting to permit airflow it's very crucial to have that airflow you don't want them to rot and just space them out on the table to make sure they're having enough airflow and you got to periodically check for it for them and you know if there's any soft onions and rot remove them you, you don't want to contaminate the other ones and create rot so 
now um you then you now your onions they're just ready to enjoy um ready to eat you know just ready to give away the thing that what we've got to remember is is that soil preparation look at your soil prepare the soil and then there's planting you got to remember to water and you got to remember to fertilize and then after you if the bulb starts maturing then there's harvesting and then there's storing so guys i thank you so much for uh listening to me i thank you so much it is getting totally just dark out here now but i think i got a little bit more time and i definitely need to go and uh hit the couch but i got a little bit more time and it's getting cold out here but i think i'm gonna stick those bulbs in there and then i'm going in well guys thank you so much for watching remember to make it a great day god bless you i see my i got about, probably about 50 onions over there so let me make it work remember if you want it bad enough you'll do it no matter what it is if you want a car you eat so bad you'll go get that car if you want a Krispy Kreme donut, oh yeah, you're going to get a Krispy. Hit that hot light comes on, you're going for a Krispy Kreme donut. Donut. I know at Walmart when I see these Krispy Kremes, I'm like, oh my god. So every now and then, it's good to treat ourselves. If you want it bad enough, you'll do it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me grab those onions.